Hey, what's going on guys? It's Yui here, and today we'll be continuing our weapon category reviews. And as promised, we have the thrusting souls to go over today. If you are new to these type of reviews, basically what we do is, is cover like every single little detail we can about all the weapons in this specific category. So we're going over things like the weapon locations, weapon lengths even, um, going over like damage numbers, what like the best scaling to go with which, I mean the best um, build to go with which weapon, going over the scalings themselves, which Ash of War are best paired with which. Yeah, pretty much just things like that. Obviously, like the move set as well. If you're here just to see like the rankings or damage numbers or like what my favorite build is with these weapons, then you can just go ahead and just skip to that. There's timestamps in the video. Um, but if you do want to see everything there, feel free to stick around. Obviously, first things first, going over my stats, just 40 and everything. Nice, clean, consistent. But yeah, without that out of the way, we might as well get straight into the weapon move set. So we'll just be using the S stock as just the base bottle. Because a lot of the weapons just use the exact same moveset, and the S stock is pretty much just the main one for that. Going over the light attacks, you get a nice six hit combo, which is nice. I don't like the last thrusting attack; it does take a lot of time. Like a lot of the weapons in the game that have their final attack being a bit long, what you can do is just only do the five hits, and then just stop and just keep going again. Um, two handed attacks exactly the same, pretty much. The uh, R twos are very nice, nice little slash attacks. Charge attacks, pretty much the same thing, just a bit more emphasized. Um, you can cancel your charge attacks, like the curve sword, too, so like a little nice little backstab attack. Just in case you didn't want to do the charge, it is a nice option to have. Running attacks, nice perks, there's be a lot of perks with the rapiers. Or thrusting swords. Jumping attacks, nice little fancy stance going on there. Crouching attack, two-handed, one-handed. Running, jumping light, jumping heavy. All pretty solid attacks. Going over the power stances. Obviously a really solid power stance moveset. As always, all the weapons have really good power stance movesets, but the thrusting swords are definitely one of the better ones out there. The crouching, running attack, nice little one-two punch. Yeah. Um, pretty much all of the swords get this weapon up. Except for like one or two. But um yeah, it's it's okay. Like, I'll go over which one's like a better pad with these weapons, but yeah, not too crazy. Anyway, just going right into the first weapon, we'll be going over the Rapier first. So as to where you find this weapon, it's just, you can just buy it off the Maiden at the round table. Um, going over the length of the weapon, it is going to be on the shorter side, so we'll skip it right back to the s stock. Definitely a lot shorter than that. Um. This weapon, however, does have a 130 critical stab. So obviously that means if you get things like backstabs or a post, they're just going to do more damage. It's like normally it's always at 100. But at 130, we still a little bit more. Obviously at uh, my stats, we're doing 369 damage, just standard infusion. Um, the move set's pretty much identical, except for the heavy attacks. They're just a bunch of pokes, which is honestly worse because I would prefer to have those horizontal swipes because the thrusting swords don't really get that, so this not having it isn't really the best. Going over the scaling, so you got a B in strength for heavy, A in dex for keen, double Bs for quality, flame art and sacred, which are going to be the same. Going to get a B in faith, poison you would get a D and a B in dexterity, a cult you get a B, magic you get a B in intelligence, and cold you get a B in dexterity and a C in intelligence. As to which one is best paired with, I'll Definitely go with a cane infusion. Obviously, there are much better weapons for the thrusting swords, but if you do want to use the rapier, then a cane infusion is pretty cool. Um, as for the critical thing going on here, obviously it's not best paired in the your right hand and your main hand because the the heavy attacks aren't really the best. So I'd probably have it in the off hand, but you're not going to really take advantage of this with the backstabs. So you can obviously just use parry. On a thrusting sword, you can put that as your Ash of War and put it in your offhand and then use that to parry and then just two hand it and then get the critical attack with that if you do want a power stance um, thrusting swords. But yeah, as far as like the only use I'd really like I'd have for the rapier. Yeah. And next up, we have the S stock, the favorite of the Soul series, the S stock, the best stock. Going over the length, obviously, we're in. Compared to the rapier, but yeah, it's definitely on the longer side, which is nice. Um, you'll find this weapon at the Nomadic Merchant and the Leonia Lakeshore. 
So I really like how they added that little touch. Um, but yeah, we're pretty much ready whatever the move set. So let's go straight into the scalings. Get a B in strength for heavy, B for dex and keen, double Bs in quality, flame mod and sacred will get you a C. Poison will get you a B in dex and a D in arcane. A cold gets you a B in arcane and a D in dexterity. Magic, get that C in intelligence. And cold, you'll get a B in D. As to which one's best is paired with, honestly, anything. Like, this one will be like one of the highest damage um, weapons in the thrusting weapon category. So you pretty much be good with literally any infusion. You can just pick yourself an s dog. it's pretty early on as well, and it'll be one of the best ones overall. Good moveset, um, good length as well, so yeah, pretty solid weapon. Okay, next up we have the Noble's s dog. We're just going right into the weapon length. It's just a little bit shorter than a regular s dog. Um, as to where you find this weapon, anywhere off the Wandering Nobles in Limgrave or Rayo Lucaria, they can drop it. Um, the moveset's literally identical. To the regular S stock, um, in terms of just the scaling for a base model, you look and there's that D's in both, which is kind of trash. And total damage area of 388, still more than the rapier. Um, going over the scaling, so we have a B in strength, B in dex, double B's for quality, flame art and sacred, you'll get a C in faith, poison, you'll get a C in dex, C in strength, and a D in arcane. Occult, you'll get a B and Arcane and E and the rest. Um, cold, you'll get that triple C. As to what, which one is the best infusion, it'll be either quality or strength. For like one of the few that actually better fit more um, strength than anything else. Mainly because of the dexterity scaling that is pretty bad and just overall. But yeah, so if you do want to use Noble's S stock, I recommend either heavy or quality. Okay, next up we have the Clean Rock Knight's Sword. Comparing weapon length back to the S stock, just that little bit shorter, but still pretty long. Um, you'll find this up in specifically in the War Dead catacombs. Be off the clean rot nine enemies, they'll just drop it. Um, going over the weapon moveset, the only differences is the R two compared to the S stock. It's exactly the same as the rapier, pretty much, which isn't that good. But I do like to have horizontal swipes. Um, you get a C in strength and a D in dexterity. I think it's like the only rapier that actually gets a better strength scaling. Um, total damage AR of 409 at 40-40. Going over the Ashes of War. Getting a B in Strength, B in Dex for Keen, Double Bs for Quality, Flame Art Sacred, you get a C. Blood, you get a C, D, D. Occult, you get a D, E, B. Uh, Magic, you get a C in Intelligence. And Cold, you will get a C, D, C. Now, as to which one is the best, Again, literally anything, this is just better damage, probably like the best damaging thrusting sword in the game. It just does more damage than like the S-Doc as well. So in every category, it pretty much is the top. Sorry, spoilers, but yeah, you'll see the damage numbers and this one just literally outperforms everything. Unfortunately, it isn't as long as the S-Doc, only by a little bit, and it doesn't have those same horizontal swipes. So it's probably better in the offhand. I just don't really care for having those horizontal swipes. And you can just pair with an Ash Wall that does better at throwing because of like Hall for a stomp, even though it has been nerfed, it's still really good. Or like Bloody Slash, even though that one's been nerfed also. Just to have some type of um, crowd control. Okay, next we have the Brazier's Rapier. Going over weapon length compared to the S Dock. It is definitely on the shorter side. Um, it is still longer than the Rapier, though, which is obvious. Um, as to where you find this weapon, I think after you defeat Godric, you'll find it in the round table hold. It'll just be right there, chilling on the balcony. I think it will drop at plus 8 as well, which is pretty nice. It'll save you some materials. Um, as for the weapon moveset, identical except for the heavy attacks. You get these nice little, like, double slashes, which are kind of cool. Um, every single one of those attacks do hit for, like, the exact same amount as, like, a light attack would. And they do fire pretty quick as well. I would say I would prefer horizontal swipes because thrusting swords just don't have that at all. So I would have liked if that had the option, but you can infuse it with an Ash of War, so you can just give an Ash of War to it actually gives you more crowd control or like this any type of AoE damage really. Um I actually didn't actually go with the base scaling. So yeah, you have a B index and an E in strength base, total damage of 377 at 4040. Now going over the infusions. At heavy you get an A. 
uh, Keen, you get an A. Quality, you get a B. Flame Art, you get a B. Um, Blood, you get a B and a D. Occult, you get a B. So this is really high scalings, which is really good. Um, Magic, you get a B. And Cold, you'll get a B and a C. So obviously, the flat damage isn't actually as good as the rest of them. But the scalings are a lot better. So obviously, at higher um, stats, you would honestly... You'll be feeling a much better um, attack rating, and you, you do up on this overall feel a lot better compared to the rest. As to which one it's best paired with, um, honestly, I think Keen Infusion is where it thrives the best because you do get that A scaling, and you still get a little bit of strength scaling, so you don't have wasted stats there. But yeah, so obviously, a much higher dexterity, you will notice that this one will probably outperform the rest. Okay, time for the Ant Spur Rapier. Going over the weapon length compared to the S-Doc, definitely one of the shorter weapons. Pretty much the same length, for just a little touch. Longer than the regular Rapier, which isn't really great. Um, going over the movesets, pretty much exactly the same as the Rapier itself. You just get those pokes, unfortunately no horizontal swipes. As to where you find the weapon, it's by an NPC invader. Pretty much like somewhere around here, like an NPC invader will invade you, it's gonna kill it. And I'll drop the weapon. Um, not this. This weapon does actually have Scarlet Rock build up, which is really good, just like a better version of Poison, pretty much. Um, you get a C in Dexterity and D in Strength, and 388 total damage AR, which isn't really great, but also we can infuse it surprisingly. A weapon that does have a Scarlet Rock passive can still be infused, which is really good. Looking at the scalings, um, B. In strength for a heavy infusion, B in um, dex for a key in infusion, double beast for quality, flame art and sacred gets you a B in faith, poison gets you a CCD, occult gets you a B in arcane, magic gets you a B, and then cold gets you triple C's. After looking at all the numbers, what it's best paired with um, statistically is either cold or a blood slash poison infusion. Obviously, infusing with cold, you do lose that Scarlet Rock build up, which is unfortunate. But it actually does have a really good arcane scaling. So, and pairing it with something like a blood or poison will let you have both still. So, that's pretty much an obvious option there. And especially specking into arcane, blood and Scarlet Rock will build up a lot quicker. So, that's pretty much a very obvious option. Unfortunately, it doesn't have those horizontal swipes, but. You can just put something like Bloody Slash on there, and then the weapon art is pretty much a horizontal swipe. Obviously, they did nerf it to where you take more damage now, but it's still a really solid option. But yeah, so Ansper Rapiers would be a definitely obvious go to for an arcane build if you're using a thrusting sword. Okay, so last of the weapons, and the only one that cannot be infused on the Ash of All, we'll be going over the Frozen Needle. Obviously, comparing weapon lengths, it's going to be the exact same length as the Rapier, which is kind of unfortunate. So, I mean, you won't have those options of the horizontal swipe, and, but the R2s are going to be this attack anyway. Um, I'm not a fan. Like, this does just as much damage as a regular R1. Like, it does have a little bit of range, but it's, like, not that much more range. Like, that didn't even hit the wall from there. Um, charge attack will do, like, twice as much damage as an R1. It is pretty quick, so it's it's not that bad, but the weapon itself, you get a B in dexterity, and at 40 dex, you're doing 388, which is a lot lower than everything else, and obviously it can't be infused, it can't be buffed, and also you're stuck with this weapon art as well, which is kind of unfortunate, so you have no option of having horizontal swipes. So yeah, as you can probably already tell, I'm not a fan of this weapon. Length, damage, what arm um, boost set, just not that great overall. Like, this attack can be pretty like useful, like, it's pretty quick. Not that bad, like, you just keep your distance and bosses, it would be a pretty annoying in PvP as well. But this the damage isn't there overall. I just wish I had something else to, like, it's boost its neutral game. I wish, like, it's weapon art or something slightly cooler as well. Like, if it's something that can't be infused with the weapon art, but with a, an Ash of all, like, give it something cooler than this. Yeah, but it, like, it's not bad. It doesn't waste FP. It's, like, an okay attack, considering. But, yeah, it doesn't really have much else going for it. Wait, as to where you find this open though, if you did want to find it, it is all the way over here. 
at the King's Realm Ruins, like in a chest down below. Yeah, that's pretty much it for all of these weapons. Let's go straight into the damage numbers and the comparisons. Okay, time to go over our wonderful chart that I've made. As always, um, I actually have made things a little bit different. I've actually incorporated a dark mode and made text a little bit bigger. I am thinking about you guys, don't worry. Um, let's go straight into things. So at heavy, so obviously this is at 40 in every stat. Clean Rod was just outperforming the rest. s stock coming in second, there will s stock in third. Um, as for um, Ash of War, piercing thing I recommend. It's not just for heavy, it's pretty much like anything that you can infuse, really. Um, so for Keen, Clean Rod coming on top, s stock and Regius Rapier. Uh, one thing I actually didn't mention about Regius Rapier, you actually get a 110 in critical damage as well. It's a little bit better for like things like backstabs. Um, Unironically, parry, Ash of War, if you're power stancing, put it in your offhand, just have the option to parry. That's specifically in PvP though. Obviously not for PvE, I wouldn't really recommend parrying at all. Um, and Stomp Stomp, something that's better for crowd control if you just don't have that. I would recommend that, because obviously you don't really get horizontal swipes in some of these weapons. Um, quality, Clean Rod, outperforming again, S-Dock, Nobles, S-Dock. What else is new? Bloodhound Step, obvious go-to as well. Another Ash of War can, you can use. Um, Faith, Clean Rot, S Stock number two, and Spurn Rapier as well. So the one that could be um, the one that had the Scarlet Rot build up was doing really well when it um, comes to other um, scalings. It was performing really well. Um, as for an Ash of War, for Faith, like Sacred Blade, Flame of the Red Veins, Flaming Strike, things I always recommend, really. Um, Poison, Blood, Plain Rot, again, number one. S Stock, number two. And Sport doing number three. But honestly, if you're using Poison and Blood, this is like your number one option because it does have that Scarlet Rot build up. And obviously, you will be using an Arcane build because obviously, you're using Blood or Poison infusion. And this Scarlet Rot also scales with um, um, Arcane. So, yeah, definitely the. Really solid option. Bloody Slash is one I recommend, even though it did get nerfed. It's a horizontal swipe, it's still good. It's It just complements the rapiers and thrusting swords really well. Um, as for a cult, Plain Rot performing once again, Ansper, Rapier. So, this is for like an arcane build. Um, you can have your Ansper, Rapier just be a cult if you want to have like. Honestly, I don't even know why you would want this. Like, <laughs> it's pretty much just better off just going with. Poison or Blood Infusion, just to have like multiple um, debuffs really, not debuffs, some status effects. Um, don't use any Occult, Ash of War, just use for some of the other ones. As for a Magic, Clean Rod, Outperforming once again, Estoc number 2, Ansper number 3. Um, as for an Ash of War, Carrion Greatsword, because a nice horizontal swipe, complements the Thrusting Sword moveset really well. As for Cold, Clean Rod, Night Sword, once again, in pretty much this, I think it's like the first time we actually had one weapon pretty much top every single every single category. Um Ansper Rapier number three, S Stock, Answer number two, S Stock number three. Half Frost Dump, obvious I actually want to recommend. I know I got nerfed, but it went from like actually broken to like actually just good now. So yeah. Okay, now time for my favorite build with these thrusting swords. And it's obviously gonna be an arcane build. So Crush Rocket 50 bigger, 20 endurance is all we need really. 60 dex and 60 arcane. So we'll also be using the S stock, the blood S stock in our main hand, and then the blood and spare rapier in our offhand. So obviously we're gonna have the option of having both Scarlet Rod and Blood Plus build up. I have Seppuku in my Answer Rapier, and then I have Blood Tax in my main hand. So obviously Seppuku, you pretty much damage yourself and you get like more blood damage. And then Blood Tax, you do a blood damage with every successful hit, you'll get some health back as well. So obviously they work in tandem. You just switch to this weapon, um, stab yourself, get more blood damage, hit something with the weapon out of this, you'll get your health back. It just pretty much works really nicely together. We'll just go test it on good old Steven real quick. I was he's gonna die way before even like Blood Scarlet um Scarlet Rod Brave start building up. And then you look at that, like, some of my health got back, he's just starting to just bleed out now. Yeah, it, it's just not fun for him. Unfortunately, yeah, it's... Steven did not stand a chance. 
they did not stand a chance. This is actually an incredibly, really, really strong build. I actually might make a separate video just about this because it's actually pretty fun. Okay, now for my lovely rankings. Let's get started at number one. We have the S Doc. S Doc is best doc, still reign supreme, has the best moves out of any of the rapiers, has the best range, and it literally pretty much like this was up there with every single category in terms of damage. Um, number two, we have the Ansmer Rapier. This is obviously the weapon with the Scarlet Rot passive. And being that it pairs really well and does actually decent damage with arcane scaled um, infusions, it's just a pretty much a match made in heaven. So it just it works really well with how broken status effects are in the game. It's just an obvious pick. The reason I didn't put out number one is because of the range and the moveset. Those R2s aren't that great, and then the range is like literally half the size of the S-Dog. So yeah, definitely have something like this in the off end and something like this in the main end. Um, number three, I have the Clean Rot Night Sword. Obviously, it did come first in literally every single damage category, but the R2s aren't as good as the S-Dog. S-Dog, you can get it earlier in the game as well. It's just, there's there's no weaknesses of the S-Dog. It's just an overall solid weapon. Moveset, range, yeah, it just does everything really well. So even though this one does more damage, I prefer this one. Um, Rajiv's Rapier, puts on number four. It, it's pretty much outclassed by the S-Dog. However, if you do have, um, a lot of stats into a particular, um, if you have a lot of points put into a particular stat, this one will probably start to out damage the S stock later on. Um, but obviously, this one has more like the range, the better moveset, and all those things. But yeah, because this one does have the better scaling, you probably notice like if you had like some like 80 dexterity, um, sharp infusion, it might start doing more damage than S stock. That's pretty much why I put it here. Neville's S stock is just pretty much the poor man's regular S stock, and you get it like later in the game, and it's harder to get because you have to farm it. Uh, Frozen Needle, that's just a weapon that does abysmal damage. Like, you do have that, uh, Frost Builder passive, but with how slow these weapons are, it's, you're not really doing, like, like, multiple quick hits. And you, you do get it, like, later in the game as well. Actually, not later in the game, it's kind of mid-game. But you only get one pair of playthroughs, so you can, like, do a uh, power stance and have, like, a couple of them going on at the same time. But even then, you wouldn't want to do that, because the damage is way too small. There's about, like, 400 total damage AR. I actually didn't put it in here. But it does like the same amount of damage as all these, but the difference is you can actually buff these weapons. So, yeah, and you're stuck with that just pathetic weapon art as well. So yeah, not really a fan of the Frozen Needle at all. And then last, Rapier. It, it's, I mean, it's supposed to be a shit weapon, it's gonna be at the bottom. Like, the smallest weapon, that's another thing about the Frozen Needle, smallest weapon as well. But yeah, Rapier, small, terrible damage. Like, has nothing going for it, has the worst moveset. But yeah, that's pretty much why the Rapier is at the bottom. But other than that, that's it for this one, guys. Um, if you did like what you see, please subscribe. We'll be doing a lot more of these. Have a lot more in the works. Pl plenty of ideas for videos coming up. Just let me know what you think I should do next. Just give me ideas. Healthy discussions in the comments, as always. But yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Peace.